In this video, I want to go through DJI's lineup of drones to figure out which drone is the best for you. Whether it's the Mini 3, Mini 4 Pro, Air 3, Mavic 3 Classic, Mavic 3 Pro, there's a wide range of features that all of these drones have, but there's also unique things for each drone. And depending on your situation, you're gonna wanna pick one drone over the other. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you a ton of footage from all of these drones, but also I'm gonna talk about all the features that make them different. All right, let's get into it. So the drones that we're talking about in this video is the Mini 3, Mini 4 Pro, Air 3, Mavic 3 Classic, Mavic 3 Pro, and then the Cine version of the Mavic 3. And so this is the lineup of the newest of each model from the cheapest to the most expensive. And I know there's other drones in DJI's lineup that kind of fill in between these drones. However, this video would be super long if I went through every single drone. And, and also these are the newest versions of each lineup. So these are gonna be the drones that you're most likely gonna wanna get. And so first, let's just talk about price because there's a wide range here. So the Mini 3 sits at 469, the Mini 4 Pro sits at 759, the Air 3 sits at 1099, the Mavic 3 Classic is at 1599, the Mavic 3 Pro is at 2199, and the Mavic 3 Cine is 4799. And this is for the base model, which is basically the drone, the cheaper controller and one battery. So it's only the essentials to be able to start flying. However, most of us are gonna to wanna to get the Fly More package, which has multiple batteries and a few extra accessories that just make it a lot easier when working with this drone. And so you can see here on the screen, here's the prices of the Fly More package with the more expensive controller for each one of these drones. So there's different price points for each drone, and once you find the drone that you're looking for, you're gonna to wanna to have to decide if one battery and the cheaper controller is enough or if you wanna get the Fly More package, which has all of the different accessories plus the three batteries. Now with all of these drones, you should consider getting DJI's Care Refresh program. And they have options for either one year or two years. And DJI will replace your drone for a small fee if you crash it, if there's water damage, if there's a flyaway, or just from natural wear and tear. And so you can have coverage for either one year or two years, so you have peace of mind when you're out flying, and this is something that you purchase right when you get your drone. And so if you wanna see more information about the DJI Care Refresh, I'll include a link down below in the description to where you can check out all the details about this program and the different prices for each one of these drones. Now there's three styles of controllers that you're gonna be able to use with these drones. There's the RCN1 or RCN2, which is gonna be the most stripped down controller. And this one you use your phone in. And there's two versions of this depending on which transmission signal you're using. And then the next size controller up is the DJI RC. And there's two versions of the RC depending on which transmission you're using in your drone. So both of these controllers have a screen built in and they have more features on the controller themselves to be able to give you more buttons and flexibility when you're flying the drone. And then there's the RC Pro, which has even more advanced features and it has things like an HDMI out. However, this controller doesn't work with all of these drones. You can only use this controller with the Mavic 3 drones. So if you're getting one of the other drones, you're just gonna decide between the version of controller that's gonna hold your phone or the RC that has a screen built in. Personally, I like the RC because it just makes it a lot easier to fly and I don't always have to have my phone in the controller. Now, one of the big deciding factors of which drone you're gonna wanna get is gonna be the weight. So the Mini 3 and the Mini 4 Pro are both sub 250 grams. And so depending on where you're at in the world, you might need a drone that's under 250 grams, and so you're gonna wanna stick with the mini series of drones. The other drones are all gonna be heavier. And when you look at the Air 3 and the Mavic 3 series, they're similar. So the Air 3 is closer to size to the Mavic 3s versus the minis. And the Air 3 is 720 grams, and the Mavic 3 Classic is 895 grams, and the Mavic 3 Pro is 958 grams. However, with all of these drones, they still are small enough to fit into your backpack. And so I just wanna show you side by side, here is all three of these drones with the RC controller in my backpack, 
and you can see how much space the Mavic 3 series takes up versus the Air series versus the Mini series. And so if you're someone who's really focused on travel or you need small drones, well, the Mini might be a good option because they are so small. And also with a small drone comes smaller batteries. Now the controller is gonna be the same for all of them. So it's not just the size of the drone, but it's all the accessories that you bring with it. However, even with the Mavic 3 series being larger, they're still easy to travel with. I've taken my Mavic 3 Pro on different documentary trips and I've easily kept it in my backpack when I'm going on the plane and when I'm out hiking with the drone. The good thing about all of these drones and DJI's lineup is they're all small and compact to be able to take with you anywhere. It just depends on how much space you really wanna save and if the Mini 3 makes sense with the other features, versus getting one of the bigger drones. Now also with size and weight, you're gonna have more wind resistance on the heavier drone. They have more power and they are heavier. When you're working with the mini series, they're lighter and they can be pushed around a little bit more than the Mavic 3. So if you're working in super windy environments, that might be something to consider and your Mavic 3 drones are gonna perform much better than the mini series. Now probably the biggest difference between all of these drones is the camera and the gimbal setup. And so on the mini and the air, you have a one and one third inch sensor. Now the big difference with the Air is you have two cameras. So you have one wide lens and then you have one telephoto lens. And this is a huge advantage of the Air 3. Now on the Mavic 3, you have a 4 3rd inch Hasselblad camera. So you have a really nice sensor on these bigger drones. And it's also a much bigger sensor. So you're gonna be able to get better photos and especially when you're shooting in lower light situations. Now the big difference between the Mavic 3 Classic and the Mavic 3 Pro is the amount of cameras. So on the Mavic 3 Classic, you just have one wide camera. That's equivalent to a 24 millimeter. But on the Mavic 3 Pro, you have three cameras. So you have a 24 millimeter, a 70 millimeter, and then 166 millimeter. So you have a wide range of focal lengths that you can use when you're out filming. And so across the entire lineup, the wide lens is always a 24 millimeter. You'll find that on every drone. The Air 3, has a 70 millimeter second camera. So it gives you this super zoomed in, punched in look. And on the Mavic 3 Pro, you have that same 70 millimeter telephoto, but then you also have that 166 that gives you a ton of range when you're out filming to really zoom in on your subject. Now on the Air 3, both cameras are the exact same sensor. It's both the one and one third inch sensor. And the wide camera opens up to an F 1.7 and the telephoto opens up to an F 2.8. Now on the mini series, they're both 24 millimeter at an F 1.7. When you get into the Mavic 3 Classic, this is where there's a huge differentiating factor between the Mavic and the rest of the drones. So on the Mavic drones, you have a variable aperture, meaning that you can change it. It goes from an F 2.8 to an F 11. Gives you a lot of flexibility to be able to change up the look of what you're creating. But also if you're using something like ND filters, you could just close down your aperture instead of having to put an ND filter on front of your lens. And so it's gonna give you more flexibility when you're flying in the sky, especially when you're shooting full manual because you'll be able to use your aperture to adjust your exposure versus having to rely on your shutter speed and your ISO to do all of your changes. Now on the Mavic 3 Pro, the second and third camera are not the same sensor as that four thirds Hasselblad camera. So the medium is a one and one third inch sensor, just like the Air 3. And then that 166 millimeter is a half inch sensor. So you do have a little bit of a difference between all three sensors on the Mavic 3 Pro. On the 70 millimeter, it's an F 2.8. And on the 166 millimeter, it's an F 3.4. So you also have an aperture difference between all of the cameras. And so for me personally, when I've been working with the Mavic 3 Pro versus the Air 3, I like the fact that the Air 3 has the same two sensors so that when I'm switching between my cameras, it makes it a lot easier to match the footage. There is a slight difference when you're switching between all three cameras on the Mavic 3 Pro. However, working with this drone geared towards creators who do want to have more control of your image, and it just takes a little adjusting in your editing software to make all three cameras match perfectly. Now, another huge differentiating factor between all of these drones is gonna be obstacle avoidance. And really, it's the difference of the Mini 3 versus all the rest. So the Mini 3 has no obstacle avoidance. And with that, there's no tracking or waypoints. On all of the other drones, you have 360 obstacle avoidance. So this allows you to fly with a level of confidence because you'll know that you're not gonna run into objects when your obstacle avoidance is turned on. And so when you're working with the obstacle avoidance on these drones, if you're flying to the side, to the front, up, or down, it's gonna be able to detect objects so that it doesn't run into them. 
And so when you have this obstacle avoidance, you have things like tracking. And all of these drones, except for the Mini 3, have tracking. Now the tracking is a little bit different between each. However, they have the same features where you could track from in front, behind, off to the side, off to some corner. And there's access to active track, which is gonna be following a subject. Spotlight, which allows you to control and keep your subject centered the entire time. Or point of interest, where the drone's gonna continue to do an orbit around a subject while it's tracking it. And I'll include a video down below in the description that really digs into the tracking in these drones so you could see how it works and how flexible it is when you're out flying. Now in terms of tracking, all of these drones have quick shots, which is a stylized shot that the drone automatically creates. And so this is the only style of tracking that you have in the Mini 3. And so for example, here is a boomerang shot where the drone starts in close, it loops out and around and it comes back. And you have these different quick shots that are accessible in all of the drones. Now what's cool on the drones that have the longer lens like the Air 3 or the Mavic 3 Pro, you can use those longer lenses when you're tracking and also when you're doing things like your quick shots. And so the next important feature is the way that it records your footage. So all of these drones do both JPEG and RAW for photography. So if you need to shoot RAW photos, you have access to that on all of these drones. Now a big difference comes into when you're shooting video and if you want more control, especially when you're color grading your footage. So on the Mini 3, you only have access to a normal color profile. And so this is gonna give you just a baked in contrast and saturation. And it's also an 8-bit 420 image. So you're not gonna have a whole lot of room to color grade. Now on the Mini 4 Pro, you get 8-bit and you get 10-bit. So there's a D-Log-M option, which is gonna shoot a flat color profile. And this also shoots in 10-bit 420. So you're gonna have more room to color grade with this drone. Now on the Air 3, you have the same D-Log-M with the same 10-bit 420. And this is on both cameras. So you could color grade all of this footage the same. Now when you get to the Mavic lineup of drones, you not only get normal and D-Log M, but you also get D-Log, which is an even flatter profile, giving you more range to color grade. Now I've created an entire set of drone LUTs that are specifically geared towards D-Log M. And you've been seeing those throughout this entire video. This is a set of color profiles that make it super easy to color grade your footage when you're working with D-Log M on any of these drones. And so if you wanna see more information around this set of drone LUTs, I'll include those down below in the description. Now with the Mavic series of drones, you get 10-bit 422, which gives you more data so that you have more ability to color grade your footage. So in the Mini 3, it records at 100 megabits per second. On the Mini 4 Pro and the Air 3, it records at 150 megabits per second. And on the Mavic 3, it records at 200 megabits per second. So you get more information with the Mavic series of drones. Now this is where the Mavic 3 Pro Cine comes in because with that drone, you also get access to Apple ProRes. So you get a more professional codec that makes it easier to integrate with higher end productions. And so the Cine version of the Mavic 3 Pro is that much more expensive because of this ability to shoot at these higher data rates, which just give you a lot more flexibility to work on your project. And also with the Cine version, you get a one terabyte internal hard drive, so you don't have to have an external memory card when you're working with that drone. So on the Mavic 3 Pro, Mavic 3 Classic, and Air 3, you get eight gigabytes of internal memory. Now on the Mini 4 Pro, you only get two gigabytes of internal memory, and on the Mini 3, you don't get any internal memory. And so it really the internal memory is only on the Mavic 3 Pro Cine version. The other ones have just enough to grab a few shots if you forget a memory card, but most likely you'll wanna always use a memory card when you're working with all the other drones. Now in terms of flight time, all of them are relatively similar unless you're working on the lighter battery for the Mini 3 series. So if you need to keep your drone under 250 grams, there's a smaller battery for the Mini 3 and the Mini 4 Pro, which allows you to keep that lower weight class. And so on these drones, you have two battery options. You have the small battery and then the larger extended flight battery. And so for the Mini 3, you get 38 minutes of flight time on the smaller battery and 51 minutes on the bigger battery. On the Mini 4 Pro, you get 34 minutes with the smaller battery and 45 minutes with the larger battery. On the Air 3, there's only one battery style and you get 46 minutes of flight time with that battery. On the Mavic 3 Classic, you also get 46 minutes. And then on the Mavic 3 Pro, you get 43 minutes. And so with all of these drones that are available now, they all get a good amount of flight time up in that 40 minute range. And so there's not a major difference between them unless you're getting that smaller battery. Now, one big difference that I've personally noticed when I'm flying all these drones is the speed at which these drones 
ascend, descend, and take off and fly away. And so the mini drones are gonna be much slower than the Air 3 and the Mavic 3. And I'm gonna put all of these times up on screen just so you could see them all side by side. And you could see that the Mini 3 and the Mini 4 Pro are much less than the Air 3 and the Mavic 3 drone. The Air 3 and the Mavic 3 are very similar with the Air 3 being the fastest out of all of these drones when it comes to an overall takeoff, descend, and horizontal speed. And so if you're someone who needs to get your drone up, you wanna be able to move fast, you're gonna to wanna to get the Air 3 or the Mavic 3 drones. You'll notice when you're flying on the Mini 3 series that they feel a little bit more sluggish, especially when you fly the drones back to back. Now, personally, it's not that big of a deal. They still fly at a good pace. However, it is something noticeable if you do want that extra speed and you wanna go super fast if you're, say, flying across the landscape, or if you want a drone that can get up in the sky quick and take off and get to the location to start flying, without taking a whole lot of time. Now let's talk about frame rates that you have access to in all of these drones. The Mini 3 only goes up to 4K 30 frames per second, and it does full HD up to 60 frames per second. The Mini 4 Pro goes up to 4K 100 frames per second, and HD up to 200 frames per second. So you can get some super slow-mo with the Mini 4 Pro. Now the Air 3 has the same as the Mini 4 Pro, so it goes up to a 4K 100 frames per second, and full HD up to 200 frames per second. And then on the Mavic 3, with the Hasselblad camera, you can go up to 5 5.1K at 50 frames per second. And for 4K, it goes up to 120 frames per second. Now that changes with the 70 millimeter and 166 millimeter because those cameras only go up to 4K 60 frames per second. So all of these drones do have good slow motion options, except for the Mini 3, which is gonna be limited by which frame rates you have access to in that drone. Now, another big differentiating factor between all of these drones is gonna be vertical shooting. So the Mini 3 and the Mini 4 Pro both have a camera that rotates, so you could do native vertical shooting if you do wanna shoot in that format. Now on the Air 3, you have a vertical mode but it's limited to 2.7K resolution. And this is because it's just cropping in on the horizontal sensor to give you that vertical image. Now in the Mavic 3, there's no vertical mode and you just have to crop in on your horizontal image. So if you're someone who's gonna be shooting vertical content, the Mini 3 or the Mini 4 Pro are gonna be good options because you have that true vertical shooting with the rotating camera. Now also a differentiating factor is gonna be your transmission. So on the Mini 3, you have O2 transmission. On the Mini 4 Pro and the Mini Air 3, you have O4 transmission which is gonna be the best transmission out of DJI's drone. It's gonna give you up to 20 kilometers or 12 miles of range between the drone and the controller, and that's using line of sight. If it goes behind a mountain, you'll lose signal. But it gives you a ton of range for this controller to the drone so that you just have more confidence when you're out flying so that you have a strong signal. Now on the Mavic 3, you have O3 Plus transmission. So it's not as good as O4. However, this is the transmission that the RC Pro uses. And so that's why you can work with the more advanced controller with the Mavic series of drones. Now, when it comes down to deciding which drone is the best for you, I really think it comes down to what it is that you're shooting and how much the weight impacts and also how many cameras that you wanna have when you're out filming. Personally, the 70 millimeter camera is something that I wanna take with me when I'm filming because the 70 millimeter gives you such a unique perspective that you don't get on most drones. You usually have the wide lens, which is great. However, that 70 millimeter, especially when I'm working with a subject, just gives you so much compression and just a completely different look that has more of this cinematic quality. And so for me, the Air 3 and the Mavic 3 Pro are two drones that I try to take out whenever I'm out filming because with these drones, you have that extra lens capability that gives you just more creative potential, more options when you're out filming. However, if you wanna keep your bag super slim down but still have a lot of flexibility flexibility, especially when it comes to something like color grading, then the Mini 4 Pro is gonna be the drone that you're gonna to wanna to get. But if you're someone who's gonna be working with clients, you might wanna get the most out of your drone, and so you'll probably want the Mavic 3 Pro Cine version so that you have the most flexibility when you get to your editing software. But if you're someone who just wants to take some family photos, you just wanna shoot some drones when you're out with your friends, well then the Mini 3 might be the best option for you because it's the cheapest, it's the lightest, it's the smallest, it's gonna be the easiest to fly. But one of the major things that might set you away from the Mini 3 series is no obstacle avoidance and no tracking or any of those other features. Overall, I think all of the drones are great depending on the situation that you're flying in. And if you wanna see more details 
about each of these drones side by side. DJI has a comparison tool on their website and you can put which drones you're thinking about side by side and look at all of the data to figure out if one looks better than the other for your specific situation. Now also I've created beginner's guides for each one of these drones. And so if you really wanna see fully in depth how these drones work and all the features that you get in each drone, I'll include links to all of those beginner's guides down below in the description. And if you wanna know which drone that I personally like the most, it's the Air 3. I think it has the best combination of being a super portable drone, but the flexibility of having those multiple cameras. And I like the fact that both cameras are the same sensor, so it makes it a lot easier to work with it when I'm in my editing software. And I like the smaller footprint of the Air 3, so I have a little bit more space in my backpack when I'm out filming. Now, if you're gonna be using your drone to make YouTube videos, well, I have a whole course series that teaches you how to be a creator and how to grow a YouTube channel and everything that I did to get this channel over a million subscribers. You could check it out over at thecreatorfilmschool.com. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know down in the comments which drone is the best for you. But next, you should check out one of these videos over here, which shows you how to use these drones to get the best looking footage when you're out flying. I'll see you on the next one.